Modern medical science typically studies the human brain individually. However, some scientists are finding that the brain is more of a social organ, which can only be fully understood when seen in interaction with others. These connections are especially sensitive during childhood as the brain is developing, but they are also relevant throughout the lifespan, for instance, in psychotherapy. In this clip, Dr. Ruth Bozinski interviews Dr. Louis Casolino about the neuroscience of human relationships and the many factors that affect a developing brain. I'm Dr. Ruth Bozinski, the president of the National Institute for the Clinical Application of Behavioral Medicine and a licensed psychologist here in the state of Connecticut. I want to welcome our guest today. It's Dr. Louis Casolino. He's an acclaimed psychologist, professor of psychology at Pepperdine University, and also an adjunct professor at UCLA. He's written several books specializing on the link between neuroscience and psychology. The one that we're going to focus on today is the neuroscience of human relationships, attachment and the developing brain. So really you are looking at the brain as a social organ. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that's the reason why we've had, we have so much trouble studying the brain or understanding the brain from a Western medical model of science is that researchers take brains, individual brains, and analyze them and scan them and dissect them. But brains are social organs and can only really be understood when they're connected to other brains. So in a sense, it harkens back to the, uh, to, to the field of psychoneuroimmunology and the role of relationship and health. It harkens back to family, th family therapy and systems therapy of the 50s and 60s that looked at the individual pathology as an expression of dysregulation in the family system. Um, it's, it's a constant fight because the default mode in our culture is individual brains with technological solutions to problems. I, I can see where it, the way we've looked at the brains in the past, focusing on the, the individual brain, almost assuming that we can find some normal brain and, and just study that in an aggregate, but as an isolated entity, just really doesn't work when you look at it from the perspective of brains are impacting each other. Um, maybe we should back up for a minute and, and talk about the whole process of attachment from the brain's perspective. What's going on in the brain when the baby and the parent are going through that dance, that psychological attunement or lack of attunement with each other? Well, probably to start, I mean, remember what I said before is that for primates, attachment equals survival and abandonment equals death. I mean, it's also true for, you know, for most mammals as well. So what you have, even at eight, at eight months of gestation, before we're even born, we have mm -hmm. a part of the brain, a core part of the brain called the amygdala, which is mm -hmm. uh, the sort of the, it's the executive center for fear activation. It's fully developed by eight months of gestation. So by the time we're born, we're capable of being completely terrified, right? And you might notice when you, when you look at young children, when they have a fear response, it's a full body response. They're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a panic attack whenever they're, mm -hmm. when, when they're frightened. They're, their mouths open wide. They, their whole body clenches. It, it's a full body experience for them. Now, the circuits that actually regulate fear um, are, are located in a primitive part of the prefrontal cortex, right above our eyes in the, in the center of our brains. But those circuits take years to develop, okay? And these, mm -hmm. and these circuits have descending inhibitory functions that control and modulate fear activation. So mm -hmm. early on, and you know, when we're born and for, and for uh, many years, many of our early years, we use our parents' frontal lobes, in a sense, as an external, as an external prosthetic brain. Mm -hmm. So our, we depend on our parents to be sensitive to us, to mirror us, to see when we're heading for danger or when we're upset. And so we have these experiences of getting upset. Our parents step in. They help us re-regulate whether we're hungry or wet or frightened or whatever it is. And then we go back to a baseline, to being calm again. And it's these thousands and thousands of interactions that we have over you know, the first few years with our parents in a sense, that provide a scaffolding for us to go from dysregulated state to a regulated, from, I'm sorry, from a regulated state to dysregulation and back to regulation. And in the process of all of these interactions where we're connecting and attuning and being with our parents, 
our sensitivity to them and their sensitivity to us, right? What's happening is that these networks between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex are slowly being shaped and they're modeling on these interactions with parents. So this is one of the ways in which parenting affects brain development. There's a lot more to learn about the neuroscience of human relationships. For more information, visit our blog at www.nicabm.com slash NICABM blog or attend a free teleseminar at www.nicabm.com slash teleseminar slash 2009. This December, NICABM will host its 21st International Psychology of Health, Immunity, and Disease Conference on the beautiful Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. Hundreds of practitioners will be coming from all over the United States and many parts of the world. Among the nearly 50 speakers, Dr. Casalina will be giving a keynote presentation about the healthy aging brain, as well as a masterclass on the social brain, health and healing through attunement. There will be several other sessions on related topics, including understanding the neuroplasticity revolution, the foundations of neuroplasticity, how energy psychology changes the brain, and the brain that changes itself. To see more information about the December conference and to sign up to attend and receive CEU credits, please visit www.nicabm.com slash D-E-C-C-O-N-O-9.